Good morning, John. There's a little section of sidewalk that I walk down pretty frequently, and I think that what happens is there's a convenience store nearby, people pick up like a bag of chips or a drink, and then when they're walking home, sometimes they drop the thing on the ground after they're done with it. I do not like this. It makes me upset. It makes me feel like I'm like surrounded by people who do not respect the space that we share. And that is irrational. It takes one person walking back and forth to the store every day and dropping a piece of trash on the ground for there to be 30 pieces of trash after a month. That's a lot of trash. It changes the way that it looks. But it also might be one person of the hundreds of people who go to that convenience store every day. So like almost no one litters, but the street is covered with trash. And here's the way of thinking about this that really changed my mind. It only takes one person every day picking up two pieces of trash for there to be no trash after two weeks. One of the best tools I have ever been taught for how to understand our world is that we often, like our minds imagine the world as like set quantities but actually set quantities are made up of inputs and outputs. A street with no litter is not a street that never gets littered on. It's a street where the rate of people dropping trash is lower than the rate of people picking up trash. It's a flow in and out. Litter goes down, litter goes up. And the person who dropped the trash is only half of the reason that the trash is there. The other half of the reason is that I didn't pick it up. I'm not like equally morally responsible for the trash on the ground, but I don't really care about morality here. I care about the trash that's on the ground. Removing responsibility and ethics from the conversation, the trash wouldn't be there if somebody had picked it up, right? And so I do pick it up. I pick it up like every time. And Catherine is like, oh my God, where, where are you going now? Just across the street to get that half empty malt liquor bottle. I'm not doing this because I think that leaving litter on the ground is like equally morally problematic to dropping the litter in the first place. But I think that we can all sort of vaguely agree that like dropping some trash on the ground is an amount, some amount of disrespectful to the space. And if that's the case, then picking it back up and not having it be there anymore is like an equal and opposite amount of respectful. Now, litter on the street in my neighborhood is not something that I'm actually that concerned about. Like, not one of the world's biggest problems. And pretty much every problem that isn't a bag of Doritos in your neighbor's hedge is more difficult to solve than, like, bending over and bending back up. But I find this a useful model when thinking about problems generally, because it tells me three things. First, one person can drop a lot of trash. Just because there's a lot of trash doesn't mean that all people are dropping trash. Second, bad things are not static. They are a result of inflows and outflows, and we cannot stop all bad things from happening, but we can focus on decreasing the rate of problem formation and on increasing the rate of problem solving. And finally, it is almost always easier to get mad about something than to do something about it, even if the doing of the something is very small. And that is an instinct in me that I need to fight against. John, I'll see you on Tuesday. I just finished editing this video and discovered that there's a full minute of time that I have, which never happens to me. But since I have extra time, I would like to encourage you to go to youtube.com slash scishowtangents to watch uh, the video version of SciShow Tangents that we are now doing. If you want to subscribe there, that would be wonderful. Tangents is like a, a comedy game show science podcast that I do with a couple of people, uh, Sari Riley and Sam Schultz, where we try to like surprise each other with science facts. It's a very good time. You can listen to it as a podcast wherever you get podcasts, but also now, as of this week, we're starting to upload it onto YouTube. Since I had extra time, I figured I'd let you know about a thing that I'm excited about. John, again, I will see you on Tuesday.